Printing out something cool here that I found on Thingiverse a while back. Finally got all the components together. And now, it's finally coming to fruition. I hope it works out. I've seen a couple of makes of this and some people couldn't get the two sides to uh, fit together. So I hope it works out. But you will see soon what this is all about. Very ham radio related and will be very useful in the field. Hey there, AD60M Dennis, here in my studio slash garage. And as you can see, it's printing right behind me. It's been going on for about an hour and a half now. Still another hour to printing, and then we'll see how this goes. Hopefully this works, because I think it'll be really cool if it does. And here it is, completed. Now let's see how it all fits together. So here we have the finished print. I don't know if I can get this in the light here, but it is a very cool design. These are two halves that will uh, mate like this. You have openings on each end. My only concern is that it, I hope that it's not too hard to cram these together. Each of these power poles will have one of these in there. So. I'll just do this one here. Oh, am I doing that right? Oh, it's like this. And then push that in there. And push that in there. So these are supposed to be PCB mounts for power pole. You can get these at mauser.com. And I will link it the description below. So I guess they're supposed to sit on a board like this, or maybe like that, I don't know. But in this case, they're going to overlap here. So I believe this is how it goes. It would be like this. Just fits right in there. And so I'll do the rest of these. And then I'm gonna have to solder this, and then I'm gonna have to do some bending as well of the of one of them so that it goes over here. So I had to struggle with it a little bit until I got it right, but um, this is the configuration here. Now I was reading on Thingiverse, the person who put this together, he said do the, the top connections when you solder, 
It seems a little crooked. I'm gonna figure out why that is. Um, and then take it out, do the do the others. It was pretty hard getting these in here, so I'm just gonna try to solder it in place. Um, there are concerns of melting. This kind of plastic is called PLA, which means polylactic acid. It's a plant-based plastic that biodegrades over years instead of hundreds of years. And so it, it actually has a lower melting point and that's why it's good for 3D printing. But I guess if I'm soldering in there, I might actually melt things. So we'll see how that goes. My prospects aren't good, but um, I'm kind of scared of taking this thing back out after... Well, let me give it a try. I will try to solder this first part, and then we'll see how that goes. Just gotta line them up. And then what I had to do off camera here is this little part at the end was digging into the bottom here. And so it was uh, hard to get this part in. And what I think I need to do is, uh, well, I'm getting off track here, but so I had to clip those ends just so it would fit right. But the way that these are arranged is kind of neat. They all kind of, and then I had to, of course, bend this one. So the intention here is that this thing has the three here, you plug it into here, and then this protrudes so that I can make another one of these and actually stack them. And the printer model uh, has different quantities of power poles in these. So there's ones with four, five, six, all the way to eight um, on the top here, or maybe seven on the top and then one on the side, but eight total. This is all I really need. I wanted to keep it small. This is the smallest one with uh, three on the side. Total of five ports. And uh, one will be the input port and then four available for distribution. Now this compared to other rig runner type things or distribution blocks, of course, does not have any fusing. So it's hard to have something tiny and accommodate fusing. I'm worrying about fusing in the in the upstream or downstream. So either fusing on the radio cable or fusing at the power source. And uh, hopefully this is just a generic way to extend it. All right, let's give this a try. Let's see what happens here. on the bare parts. Yeah, this is kind of not. Yeah, I don't know if that even helped. But presumably, that is how it will go. Alright, I had to skip through the soldering because I struggled a bit, but let's see if I can get that closer here. Basically got all the points in. I had to take it all out and do as recommended and have to flip it over, put it into the other side and soldered the other side, but um, no significant melting. I got a little bit of melting right here. So let's see how this mates. You can see how that is. It's all very precariously put together. And I don't expect this to work that well, but we'll see here. And here we go. It's 
So this is, uh, I get it, it's, there's a little splitting here, which is expected. It's very, it's very tight fit. Probably gonna apply a little bit of glue or something here. But actually fit a lot better than I thought. Had to, of course, encourage it a little bit <laughs> with some uh, light tapping to get it on there. But let's, let's see how it works. I gotta get my battery. Extension cable is not too long. I'll plug that in here. And it's supposed to be on its side like that. We'll test things out here. Yeah, works just great. I'll position that for you a little easier. Let's Let us see here. I'm going to get my multimeter. The different voltages instead of powering this thing on and off all the time. First one, 13.24, I don't know if you can see that, yes, this is not something that really I would expect to fail, I put a lot of, uh, put quite a bit of solder all over those connections. So there you have it, it is a Completely DIY distribution box, and um, these are 45 amp hour connections. Of course, my battery uh, is fused at 25. I might change that fuse to be like 40. And with these kind of things, if you want to print one yourself, I don't actually have the material yet, but um, a more recommended plastic just for the heat tolerance is ABS plastic. Um, PLA is a low melting point, lower melting point. So for things like this, like power distribution, where it could possibly get hot, you could just, this case could melt. It's just, it's a lot easier to work with. It produces cleaner prints. It doesn't stink while you're printing. Um, but ABS is, uh, got, has higher melting points, so could tolerate it even more. But uh, for the most part, it's, uh, it's pretty convenient. If you're using this on, in the field and uh, like a QRP radio or even, even like a 100 watt radio, I've never encountered where um, good connections and good wire for the battery connections caused any heat other than maybe a mild warming at highest power so not really a big concern but if you're going to try to run 45 amp max or if you're going to try to max out all these um, that's dangerous territory other um, rig runners they they put a lot of fuses and cumulatively could be very much um, again this design doesn't it just totally foregoes that whole thing so it turns out I actually installed the whole assembly backwards. Just wanted to make that note. Uh, that's why I had to clip that lead because uh, it's all pointing the wrong direction. I mean, this still works. So that is why those leads were going in the wrong direction. Now I could either pry this apart and uh, try to make it right. Or I could just work with this way. It doesn't really matter. 
I just know that if I am doing this again or even printing this for fellow ham, it's uh, going to be different from this build because these are going to be switched for stackability. And so if you were to stack one of the future prints with this one, it would be this way and then another one that's flipped over like that to connect to it. So very weird. Anyway, I just thought I'd make that note because um, of the way that this is this was done. I thought it was odd that I was hitting that lead against the against here with all the angle angles going this way. And it's because the whole assembly of these connectors should have been flipped. So this is something that I ordered from eBay uh, a while back when I got the pan adapter for the Elecraft. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. It's just a simple four extension. So one in, three out. I use it, it's in my Elecraft case, it makes it easy to, you know, split the power from the battery to the, the pan adapter and the, the radio. And I think I kind of understand how this may work now because of these. I could probably make something similar with these and if I try that I'll just make another future video about it. But this thing cost $22 on eBay. Couldn't find it for any cheaper. Uh, 25 of these cost about $13. So that's actually probably the most expensive part. And then you can get a ton of these. If you get them in quantities, large quantities, they're actually pretty inexpensive. So some kind of, I gotta get some kind of shrink tubing and see if I can arrange them in a similar fashion. Thanks for watching everyone. This was a fun build. Like and subscribe if you can and leave a comment for me what you think of this build. You can always find me on Twitter as usual at 86DM73. Hope to have some more videos for you soon.